Hello and welcome to Talking Defense, Raphael's Defense Magazine. Every program is dedicated to a different subject with all relevant experts, data and aspects here in the studio and from around the world. And today, air-to-air -air missiles. I'm joined uh, by two, Yaniv Rote, Marketing Manager at the Air uh, Defense Systems and Air-to-Air -Air Missiles Directorate, and Kobi Rege, Founder and CEO at the Squadron, Hatayeset, and ex-commander of two F-16 fighter squadrons. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me. So, Yaniv, let's talk about 70 years of legacy, right, at Rafael? Absolutely. Uh, we are very proud of these 70 years in which we have been uh, developing and producing and testing and also uh, operation, get, get those missiles to be operationals of five different generations of short range air to air missiles, starting from the Shafrir 1 before the Six Day War until today with the Python 5, uh, five generation, all of them operational. And also three different generations of BVR missiles, of beyond vision range missiles. Uh, which are uh, now led by the uh, iDerby ER, which is the new guy in the uh, family. So let's speak briefly about those two families and the changes, because you, you've squeezed 70 years into two sentences. Okay. The, the short-range missiles are meant for dogfights, basically. So they are, uh, they are for uh, close range, they are for visual contact, uh, um, and, and, and a little beyond that. For instance, the Python 5 is, 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 is in the middle just in the middle of the two families, because on one hand, it can handle very short range, high maneuverable uh, capabilities. And on the other hand, you can also shoot it to uh, some medium ranges, which is very close to BVR, because it's got the lock on after launch capability, meaning it can lock on the target after it is already airborne, uh, it is already shot from, from the interceptor air aircraft. So, so Kobe, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, you used to see pilots in the eye, as you used to say, dog fights, and currently, you know, you shoot them down from hundreds of miles. It's a whole different ball game. Yes, uh, you have a good evening. So the history of uh, the Israeli Air Force and the heritage go a uh, long back ago um, uh, with air-to-air -air combat and a showdown. And uh, Rafael was really a major factor in those uh, successes in the past. You remember 82, it was the really the last time that we really engaged enemy aircraft. Israeli Air Force has shot down around the 90, 100 uh, Syrian uh, aircraft. And this is the last time they dare to challenge us. But even today, we are using the air-to-air -air missiles in the operational arena, mainly against small UAV that are being launched uh, from uh, Gaza Strip, uh, from uh, Lebanon by the Hezbollah, and also uh, by Iran from Syria. So the missiles were relevant uh, in the past. They are relevant uh, even today, and we can speak why they are relevant maybe later on. No, uh, let's do that because you've mentioned the, the, bat the current battlefield. Uh, currently, we hear of possible attacks from Yemen, for example, sending UAVs or cruise missiles. We've seen the Saudi oil fields being attacked from Iran. So, Kobe, it's totally relevant to Israel, to the Americans, to everyone. Yes, you're totally right. We now hear on the news uh, the motivation of Iran to retaliate upon the, about Soleimani. Um, and one of the scenarios are uh, launching uh, cruise missiles toward Israel. Cruise missiles, I don't know if you know, but it's a really challenging weapon against us because they fly very, very low, very, very fast, and usually they are challenging our air defense systems. Uh, the main element that we can confront them is by using aircraft that will detect them because they are uh, flying in a high level, and we will have to use air-to-air -air missiles in order to shoot them down from the air. This is, will be the main course. 
So again, it is uh, relevant and it uh, bring an edge for several yes. of our so, Yaniv, I, I want to ask you, I mean, it started as a weapon against aircrafts, and currently, as we hear from Kobe, it's not only aircrafts, it's missiles, it's UAVs, I mean, those weapons are, are, are being used for a variety of, uh, of uh, missions. Absolutely. They are meant to uh, actually uh, get off the air everything that is flying out there, uh, and, and they are, uh, their lethality is good enough. For all those for all those kind of, of systems, as a matter of fact, a cruise missile is a is a particular point, is a particular uh, working point of an aircraft. So in a way, it is a small aircraft. I want to rely on both of your experience, uh, starting with you, Yaniv. Um, looking at the battlefield, which has changed dramatically because of the range, because of the intelligence, because of the weaponry that you you produce today is totally different and much more technological and capable of. Does it change the pilot itself? Do you need to be better? Or maybe everybody can be a pilot because the system is so advanced, so you can be less good? I think you have to be better. I think you have to control more information. Even though you have the, all those decision support systems, you still have uh, to control a lot of information that you get into the cockpit to understand uh, the nature, to understand the uh, picture, the aerial picture and to uh, distinguish enemy from, from uh, good guys and, and uninvolved aircraft that is out there in the space. Kobe, you train <laughs> at the squadron at Ayeset, you train you know, everybody to be a pilot or you prove to everyone that he, that he can try to fly that machine, but is it really so? Look, today technology really helps the pilot uh, to really focus on the mission rather to focus on other elements. And it uh, and they give you an edge. On the other hand, you have a battlefield that are now becoming more complex. The threats are more dense. So um, I, I think that the complexity uh, today is much uh, um, much more complex than it was in the past. Uh, but in the end, it's uh, mainly regarding the pilots. Let's say that, you know, in the good old days, when you were a knight sitting on a horse, holding your spear in a duel. So the outcome was, first of all, about your ability as a knight to perform, but you, you need to use a good technology. I mean, your spear needs to be balanced. It needs to be longer. It gives you an edge. Uh, you can uh, fire first upon your enemy, give you an edge uh, in the battlefield and, uh, and it help you to be more successful on your missions. So Yaniv, I want to ask you what, what, what lies in the future for the air-to-air -air missiles? Because it seems like we've reached everywhere. I mean, we're <laughs> at the end. That's exactly what we have been saying like 50 years ago. I mean, every, every generation thinks that this is it. This is over. And we always find the next, the next step the next generation. So we are working on some, some new uh, products. One of them is the IDRB ER, which is the newest guy in the BVR family. Uh, we use a uh, uh, special technology developed by Raphael that we call the uh, uh, two pulse rocket motor, meaning two different pulses that you can actually decide when you need the second pulse. Uh, the first, of course, you need it when you launch it. But the second pulse, you uh, decide the flight control system decide when to ignite it, and then you can optimize the flying path of the missile and optimize the management of the energy of the missile in order to gain extra range for that. So with the same dimensions and almost the same weight, uh, we, uh, we're coming up with a missile that is uh, more than 100 kilometers in range for a uh, head-on situation. So it's that, that's the future. It will never end. Uh, Yaniv Rotem, Kobe Regal, thank you so much both for joining me today. And that's uh, all <laughs> from us. Today so we'll be back shortly with another edition of Talking Defense. Until then, stay safe and stay tuned. Bye-bye.